on the Mr. Think Smart Network. Listen, I be having some dope people on here. <laughs> I'm just letting people know. I'm letting them know right now. Ma'am, introduce yourself to the world. Yes. Hey, everybody. I am Precious Simone with Precious Simone Inspires LLC and Energized Coaching and Consulting LLC. I help individuals go into purpose, find their purpose, tap into their why, and help them realize why they even want that. I am a mentor, a life purpose coach, a transformational speaker, and a two-time published author. Yes, you all. You're a two-time. <laughs> two-time. Two-time published author. <laughs> so, ma'am, let, let me ask you a question. Let's start at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So, where are you from? Yes, I am born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri. Okay. And high school? Of course, we asked the high school. You gotta ask the high, to school. the high school. You gotta question. know it. Oh, Rittner High School. <laughs> Rittner High School? You went to Rittner? I went to Rittner. Okay, I am, cool. And I'm okay with that. It's, you know, it's okay. You went to Rittner. Okay, I'm, I went to Berkeley. It's no longer here. But Rittner's still there, so, you know, it's all good. It's, it's all good. South, yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. So your childhood in the city of St. Louis, growing up as a woman, yes. Um, how has your background inspired where you're going now? Oh, that's such a good, good question. Oh. I like that question. I'm glad <laughs> and you I'm do. I'm excited to unpack that question because mm -hmm. growing up, I grew up in a single parent household. My mom had six girls and one boy. My father passed when I was five years old, so I didn't have that grooming of a father in my life. But my mother was so strong and so amazing and she really worked hard to give us the best that she could we didn't even know that we went without y'all we play high go see duck duck goose red light green light freeze tag everything you can think of <laughs> rev over rev over i gotta fool folks with no rev over rev over <laughs> rev over <laughs> Red light, green school. light, so much more old school, right? We went in the house when the lights, when the street lights came on. That's mm -hmm. the kind of life that I live, double dutching. And again, we didn't know that we didn't have. However, my mom, she stopped at 10th grade and she told all of my siblings and I that success for us was to complete high school. And I always had this nagging thing on the inside of me that knew that there was more, that, that desired more out of life and knew I wanted more for family. But again, there wasn't anybody around me to look up to. Again, there's no knock at family, there's no knock at any of them. It's just that my mom spent her time raising us and grooming us and developing us. And again, so success for me was complete high school. And so it was hard <laughs> after I completed high, when I was going through high school, I was an athlete, I ran track. And there were people who would come along and talk to me about college and talk to me about the, my athletic abilities. And I was like, there's no, we don't talk about college in, in my home. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't talk about those things. So that's not something that I aspire to do. But I knew that, again, there was always this aching and longing for so much more. Which makes sense <laughs> now while individuals would come along and talk to me about college and talk to me about, you know, going on and into my athletic career. Well, I had the wonderful opportunity to go off to college on a full ride track scholarship and so I didn't have to pay for school. And again, I didn't know that college was for somebody like me. Again, again with my upbringing and nobody in my background, you asked me about how my childhood has influenced my background, did not necessarily have what I looked up to. However, these moments were created for me so that I could be successful. And so for me now, I paved the way for my nieces and nephews. I paved the way to show my siblings what's possible. I have sisters that have now graduated from college or starting businesses or different things now. And it's like, wow, this, this wasn't something that was in our background. However, your background, you can either let it limit you or defeat you, or you can use it to catapult you and push you to help you show your family what's possible. And so I keep going and grinding for them. I keep going because I know there's so much more the hustle <laughs> as we call it mm -hmm. and so for me my background has played a huge factor into me wanting more and dreaming more and desiring more all because I believe we deserve more we don't have to be limited and I'm not going to say that there's not times where my background will come and whisper at me and say how dare you swim this deep how dare you dream that big how dare you go that far nobody has gone that way you're going to fall flat on your face <laughs> success isn't for you who do you have to lean on to tell you that you should keep going and I use those voices to say you should keep going, you should keep trying, you should keep pushing, you should keep elevating because those voices are a lie and I can swim in the deep. Good answer. Good <laughs> luck. This is what happened when you deal with speakers. That's why people like Joe, listen, listen, Joe, don't go, don't, don't step up like you're on stage. I'm like, I got it, I got it. I got it, I got it. I got it. It was a good question. I mean, you know, I, I do what I do. I know, I'm, I'm gonna do this for a very long time. Yeah, please you. don't stop. I got it. Please so don't. let me ask another question. So when did you take the time after all of that mm -hmm. and you realized that you wanted to be an entrepreneur and you wanted to not even just an entrepreneur, a female, a woman, mm -hmm. 
entrepreneur. Of so course. when did you in your mind say, I want to be an entrepreneur? Yes, I want to say about 2015, I was invited to this speaking engagement. And at that point, when I saw the reactions of those women and I, the, the overwhelming feedback about my ability to communicate and my ability to help individuals transform and kind of see where they are in life, I said, wow, I have something of value. And most of the time we think when we have something of value, oh, that's just for that moment. But I realized that I have something that can help other people. And most of the time we are put here in life with solutions to help solve problems. And I'm like, well, I'm here to help people solve problems, whether that's to get unstuck, whether that's to come out of their past, whether that's to come out of their head, whether that's to come out of defeat and storms of life. I have the ability to help people connect to that place and help them come out of it. And so in 2015, I said, I am going for this. And so I started getting booked for speaking gigs and then I started putting the price tag on it because mm. <laughs> I started finding my worth. Mm. And I started, again, when I realized that I was a person of value mm -hmm. and that I contribute much to the betterment of mankind and I'm called to be a blessing to my generation and contribute much to my generation, I started going all in on myself. I started refining and perfecting my craft. I started connecting myself with people who could help me see them my blind spots. And since then, I haven't stopped going. Mm. <laughs> Deep. I like that. I like that. So your thoughts as an influencer, a woman of empowerment, how is it now let's put let's put let's put let's put the spin on it. Mm -hmm. How is it being a black woman and being an influencer? Yes. And so, you know, it's not always easy for mm -hmm. women. <laughs> Men kinda right. always or are going to be looked at as those who get sealed the deal. Mm -hmm. They are the ones that's going to command presence and command attention and command the room. They're going to go from gut grit and they're going to be the biggest risk takers. However, you, when you think about, I want to go back in time just a little bit. When you think about World War II and the Industrial Revolution and women coming out of the cookbook to the textbook and seeing what they can do and offer in the workplace, especially Black women, right? Because they were told what their role should be. They were told how they should act. They were told what they should be like. Well, we've seen a completely different evolvement, if you will, in the last man 20 something years if you will mm -hmm. of women coming to the scene and finding their niche finding their lane finding their their place in society and going past cultural norms going past societal issues and cultural racism all those things and so as a black woman with someone who carries the complexion of the re of rejection if you will with society would say that's you have the complexion of rejection now i'm like no <laughs> because i'm watching all of these female entrepreneurs and female women rise to occasion in, in the political realm and corporate realm whereas in times past it was just one woman carrying the torch you saw pockets of women now we see an influx of women look at miss usa miss team miss world you know mm -hmm. and it's inspiring to see women like me look at our recent vp elect I just think it's inspiring now, whereas I don't have to carry. I, I deserve a table, a seat at the table. I deserve to be in that room. I deserve to be in that space, whereas typically we would shrink back and say, mm, "We're homemakers. We should stay in our place." Now I think we are rising to the scene, and even for myself, I'm okay now with saying, "I deserve a seat. I deserve to be at the table. I deserve to be in the room, mm -hmm. I <laughs> and I deserve it. to carry my voice and, and make my my music loud in the earth." So I now. It. I'm excited because I'm seeing women in all spaces and all places, especially women who look like me. And it's encouraging for the younger generation. I'm a mentor. And I think it's important that they see women who look like them in places of influence. So let's talk about these books. So you get, <laughs> so you let's talk about the first book real quick. Uh -huh. Your first book. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to write that in such a way that you wrote it? to gear toward the people so they can be empowered yes so y'all believe it's or not i'm a dreamer <laughs> and so when i dream different things come to me well it was this particular season where i was talking with a friend at work and she had just published her book and we were talking about her book and different things like that and some of the things that i wanted to do in life well i was at home just kind of writing some things out about my life and i ended up going to this conference in wisconsin in november of 2017 while i was there it was all about dreaming, living, passion, living your passion and your purpose and walking that out. Well, this woman, I don't know how many of y'all people are faith, <laughs> but I have to, I'm, I'm unapologetic about that because I know we're living in a society where people want to logically, you know, delete the Lord, but I can't. <laughs> mm -hmm. You cannot, you, okay, that's another topic. But, mm -hmm. <laughs> so while I was there, this woman spoke into my life and she mm -hmm. told me that there was a book on the inside of me. Now, mind you, I had already been dreaming, already been, had been writing things out. I go home from that conference and I have a dream about this book and the whole title came to me. And I was like, whoa, 
wow and so i began to share with my friend at work and some other friends and i was telling them all the different things and i was like i think i guess i'm supposed to share my journey of brokenness to wholeness how i got whole how i came into this place of healing well i began to write and within 30 to 45 days the book was complete i began to share my journey of heartbreak and getting healed and overcoming unforgiveness and bitterness and rage and all of those things because of lacking a father and different relationship battles and so that first book is confronting the age-old question why me because we all ask it and <laughs> we mm -hmm. all deal with why me and i talk about why not you why not you to go through those things and it's an inspired journey from pity to purpose overcoming the pity of why me and getting to the purpose of why me the reasons why you had to go through it so i was inspired from a dream and my story to share my healing journey with people excellent excellent so now the the, the second one the second one you get rid has it has it, have, have you released it yet? tomorrow tomorrow november the 11th 2020 now they might not see this tomorrow but by the time you see this it's already go get it because it's already gonna be Amazon out candle is gonna be out there live for them to see the book and what's the name of it that book is whatever it takes Evolve. It's all about growth. It's all. No, about I don't even want you to talk about. It. Go get it. Okay, okay. Go get it. I want <laughs> them to go it get takes. it. I want them to research it. I want them to look it up. Okay. They, you already told them where it. I want them to <laughs> do some research. That's what our people don't do. They don't do their own research. That's they want true. somebody to walk them and hold their hand. That's true. We're not holding nobody. Hey, ain't nobody coming to save you. That's right. <laughs> ain't nobody coming to save you. She better. You, hey, you better save. Yourself. You gotta save yourself. <laughs> gotta save yourself. And that's biblical. That is biblical. You gotta do that. I can appreciate that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's, now let's move on. Now the last couple of years you've had different, you have different, you've had different journeys, from being a part of social uh, social organizations <laughs> to uh, you know launching your book. Not you know what I'm saying a while back. The now as a speaker because I I battle back and forth from St. Louis and Texas and having assignments. Mm -hmm. I haven't had any real real big assignments yet. Uh, I right now I, I kind of I'm kind of on that road. We're working on a little small tour. Hopefully these schools open back up. Yeah, we're working on like a little tour. Okay, cause like you know it's it's a classroom tour, mm -hmm. and um, I like that. Now I, I can speak in front of anybody, but I love that intimacy and right there with the with the student or right there with the whoever it is. I don't care if they it's a it's a business conference. I give them that fire. <laughs> but how has that journey been this last year during COVID? I've had to pivot, of course. I've had mm -hmm. to make uh, several shifts with Zooms and live streams, which is so good that I actually was prepared because there were times where I actually had did Zooms and I had did different stream yards and stuff like that, but I didn't know that it would be beneficial in this time. And so I've been on lives with schools. I've been on lives with different organizations and it's actually been beneficial because you can bring that energy to the screen. If, if it's who you are, it's going to translate. And so I've had to make adjustments. I've had to shift. We have to be okay with being creative and innovative so that our message can still come across to the people that it's supposed to reach because we have audiences within audiences. Mm -hmm. And so you have to know that there are several messages that's gonna, that when you speak is going to touch each person that's out there listening. And so it's been it's been cool adjusting. Now, I was excited about all the... I was in and out of state mm -hmm. <laughs> all last year. Mm -hmm. And so it was different getting adjusted to it at the top of COVID. However, now I have, like I said, since pivoted and essentially evolved and mm -hmm. have taken on different speaking opportunities on the Zoom as well on different lives that I can say it still translate and people's hearts are still reached. That's good. I should have said this in the beginning, no but, I, but I did not. Mm -hmm. So from, from people, places, things... Who do you think for your journey and where you are now, right here in the current, right now to this moment? Man, I have so many people that I can list off and mm -hmm. think, and I would hate to miss some names, but if I can name some, Christy Jackson, um, Keisha Kent, Vivia Lopez, Shakita Anderson, friend, my friends from Christian, who's always putting a plug out there. I haven't had a apply for several jobs in years because she's always plugging me and thinking I'm a great asset to organizations. I haven't had to apply. So I thank her for always being that person and network me and put my name in spaces, get you some people who put your name in spaces. She's working as a manager. <laughs> right. right? That's important mm -hmm. because if, if people are afraid to mention you knowing what you carry and knowing you're the person for that, that speaks to a level of insecurity or something mm -hmm. that's on the inside of them that they can't say your name when you're the one for that job. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it's so many. Dorlicia Menzi, one of my really close friends. Who else? I mean, it's so if, if you miss them, just say, I, listen. Y'all know who you are. You know who you are. Listen. <laughs> it's a lot of y'all. Yeah. I can't thank God enough for you all for the push. 
for challenging me, Pamela Davis for pushing me, mm -hmm. uh, Melissa Douglas, you all have poured into me, have helped strengthen me as a woman, and I'm, I'm grateful for you all. Hmm. Great, great. We're going to end this right here. Man, Precious, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I wanted, I wanted you to be on my platform um, to give that push, that energy that you just gave. Because oh, we know so, it's going to help somebody somewhere. Somewhere, as they put it. Somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. Some, somewhere. <laughs> but somewhere somebody will be empowered by this, man. Um, because I've learned through this little, this little camera and me speaking, <laughs> no matter if they just hear my voice, yeah. uh, people have been touched in different different continents mm. and message me on YouTube and mm. and social media like man you, you touch me like mm. it, that keep you going when you people right right here at home won't even say nothing to you but when people like like oh you know I what know, right? I need to go go <laughs> over there so, <laughs> maybe that's where I need to be uh, no no but anyway you will find support from a lot of strangers you, it just is what it is that, that's where and it goes okay it's that totally is, okay receive it it is I do <laughs> I receive all of it all of it <laughs> all of it <laughs> Send all the blessings. Yeah. It, I'm a, I block anything that I don't want. Ooh. I'll, I'll tell you that. Like everything yeah, I don't want. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I tell I that. I block everything I don't want. Everything I don't want, I block. You can't give me nothing I don't want. Ooh, that's good. Yeah, you can't that's give rich. me. Yeah. A lot of meat on that bone. <laughs> it is. <laughs> uh, but people can't, you know what? And I know I'm, I'm ending it. I'm ending it. So people can, they, they can't galvanize that, especially. I hate to say it, uh, being raised in the church mm -hmm. um, and learning both sides mm -hmm. of the natural and the spirit. We're learning the spiritual first and then the natural second. Mm -hmm. And then knowing that it, it all really works together. Exactly. And But yeah. they can't, you know, galvanize that in their mind mm -hmm. that if you don't want something, you spiritually can block it. Yeah. You yeah. can say, I don't want that. Yeah. And don't receive it. it. And mentally take control of that thing because people don't understand that we have dominion. Come on. Let me Come get on. out. Let me stop because I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing no, y'all. Because we give so much permission in our lives. We you give do. this permission. You get you get access. You get yep. access. You get access. Those, yep. are doors Those are doors and windows to create all kind of chaos. You mm -hmm. want to look at your life and wonder what's going on with it? Look at the last thing you gave permission in your life. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I had to start doing it. Hold on, pressure. You gave permission to that. This is yep. why you and the uproar and your spirit out of whack. You see yeah. what I'm saying? And that's what people like. I never got like. I never ask for people to give me good energy. I create the atmosphere. Mm. I don't care who it comes in. The, good, I man. create the atmosphere. And yeah. if you don't, if you don't agree with mine, you got to go. That's good. You got to go. I, I that, you, that you have to understand. You have the power. Mm -hmm. you, like when we say, "I'm the life of the party." Mm -hmm. I am that life. Yeah. I bring life to that situation. Yeah. To where I remember working. And I was working at Harris State University when I was working as a director there. Uh -huh. I could be in my the, the students loved to be in my office because it was good energy. Uh -huh. And then people who had a bad attitude when they came, you either transition to a good time, or if you wanted to stay mad because that's what you chose to stay, you had to leave. You, you couldn't be because because you like I can't be around these happy people. Yeah, these happy. So I was like, well, that's on you. Yeah, that's well, I see y'all, lady, y'all too. Y'all, y'all don't know what. I like. I knew. Exactly. I didn't know what it was then, but I was like, peace. <laughs> Peace, yeah, I can go. People get to tell you you too much. No, yeah, if you uh, if people much. understand that how to if they know that how much energy they had inside of them, mm. you can change a room. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You can change. That people don't know how much power. you asking for somebody to give you energy that you can you can galvanize yourself. Come on, man. Let me stop. Oh, <laughs> listen, here. listen. I thank you. Know what you think smart. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I thank you for being on my platform. Thank you so much. We love you. We're going to make sure we, we, we're we praying for you. We're pushing you. Uh, do the same for us as we grow because we're growing. Yes, I got y'all. I'm probably like the best kept secret out there. Yes. I'm hey, but fine China, look, fine China is put away right. for you, a special you're time. Right. You're right. So, you trust me. He you're will right. take your platform like the hill. He'll say, I, Let me get the door for you. Yeah. Let me get the door for you. Yeah. You're going to be up here and wondering, how do I, I get up here? You know, yeah. I just. And now and I'm the only the humility you carry. Thank you. And you know what? People don't understand it because I'm the only child. But my mom, my wow. dad has. I have two sisters by my dad, but we have different mothers. We live in different households. Uh -huh. I live. I came up by myself. I had cousins. Wow. A lot of them. And people like, Joe, you ain't like you ain't spoiled. But I'm like, my mom ain't spoiled me. <laughs> I'm from the hood. <laughs> Boy, we ain't got it. We ain't got it. Okay, we ain't got it. I ain't got it. What you crying for? Yeah. You can't get it. Yeah. That's what it is. But thank you again. Uh, we're going to end it right here. Thank you again. But what I want you to do before you leave is drop your platforms, mm -hmm. drop all your information so people can find you. Yes, you can find me on Instagram, Precious Simone Inspires. 
You can find me on Facebook, Precious Smith, or you can like my business page, Precious Simone Inspires LLC, LinkedIn, Precious Smith, and lastly, YouTube, Precious Simone Inspires. Queen of inspiration, y'all. There you have it. Thank you again. <laughs> no problem. All right.